Hi, right, greetings everyone. We are back again. This is the coronavirus special. If any of you are paying attention, you probably don't want to lick that. Anyway, um, so listen, this used to be Mike's, I think. Yeah. And uh, this is the OSHA approved message. Got it? 30 feet, nothing less. Not 29.9, 30 feet. So anyway, if you're doing a proximity check all the time when you're using this, it's pretty amazing. This is a bee, uh, Weed Eater BC24W. It's kind of similar in vain to the one that we worked on before. Um, I'm hoping that this one's going to be a little bit more likely that we can keep the actual original carburetor and uh, go from there. So, you know, I've been watching this like um, stuff pan out with the... Uh, coronavirus it's looking pretty horrible right the one thing i didn't anticipate much was the aggressiveness of limiting um people's movement across the planet yeah that's a little out of control hey look at that what is that there someone's art project looks like this had a hole or something at one point i don't know what happened here i wonder if the fuel tank is going to be compromised i don't know so we got ourselves primer bulb. Does that still work? It looks a little brittle. Oh, that's hard. This is rock, rock hard. That doesn't push. So that's going to be replaced. Oh, look at that. Surprise, surprise, Waldbro. Uh, what do we have here? It looks like back here is super greasy. Can you see in there? Yeah, you can. See how oily that is? Greasy, oily. I'm not really sure. That's the right word to use. But uh, either way, um, something's not good there. And uh, we have uh, you know, stuff fixing trimmers. Getting bored of them. Get these chainsaws done. But this is interesting because it's old, you know. So yeah, we have our air filter. That's amazingly clean. Looks good to me. Okay, well, anyway, like I said, I didn't really anticipate the, um, the aggressive quarantine of people like the way the countries have done that. Looks like we have a, uh, this picture is probably high. That's probably low. Um, throttle is here. Let's see. Pull, we'll pull that and watch this. Okay, that works. It's a little slow, so it's just a little sticky. All right, either way, let's have that. How does this, does this work? Yeah, that works. Okay, cool. Let's check it for a uh, spark. Let's uh, get that spark plug out. Uh, that is a three-fourths. <laughs> yeah, that's not three-fourths. I meant uh, five-eighths. This is five-eighths. Too tight. Okay, so we're gonna put our inline spark plug tester. Did I need to do that? Ugh. No, I didn't. Okay. Let's just put that back in. I <laughs> know some of you are like, no, don't do it. If you were anticipating, I was gonna use my spark plug tester. this back on right. and uh, this have a kill switch anywhere hmm. that's a good question oh buddy it's like a tidal wave of craziness oh, I did see a spark just now didn't you see that I'm gonna get you out of my way. Oh, let's try it again. <laughs> I hope you can see that. There is a spark happening there. I feel like an idiot. That's it right there. That's the on and off switch. 
So it was actually in the on position. Fair enough. When I pulled it, some of them must have left it just trying to get it to turn on just gave up. We'll find out what happened, won't we? Then we should try to get a little bit of fuel in there and just see. Uh, one of these little 40 to 1. It's got a little extra. Uh, what do you call it? Amount of oil to help this thing out. I just want to see if it's going to start. So right. we're dealing with. It's got a lot of compression, we know that. So I'm like almost breaking my hand trying to turn pull this, pull start this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. bit in here. Come on, you can aim for holes. Okay. Oh, could flood the engine just now. Alright, the spark plug in general looks pretty darn good. I've never seen a spark plug with so little carbon build up in any of it. In anything as old as this. Anybody know how old this thing is? What year it was created? So I've been doing a lot of life changing stuff recently, and uh, it's been so fascinating. Uh, I started watching uh, those gold digger videos. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, people like take videos of women that like uh, obviously only like guys for their stuff. Anyway, hey, it's, they're not new, but you know. Just wanted to share with you. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Oh, I heard something. There it is. Holy pop is 65. Yeah, that's pretty good. We're going to uh, run with that, say it wants to run, and then we'll continue. What are you thinking? I'm thinking we should uh, just go down the route of um, pulling this apart and see what's happening underneath there. Okay. Let's get this sh sh back shroud off. Kind of just protects the uh, user from getting burnt. And uh, looks like this is the bottom part for the uh, the engine, um, the bottom part of this, the two-stroke um, short block is covered back here with this, similar to the one that looks like this that we just worked on. Um, yeah. So anyway, this is a T25. It's a very typical torques that really I see in a. Uh, T25 or T30 and T20s, those are the three sizes I see, mostly with these uh, smaller engines, so far. I was saying to you about the Gold Digger videos, uh, they are, they're not new, they're, you know, they're, there are many people that have done these videos, but the guys that, that, that do these videos, right, to try to expose these Gold Diggers, a couple of things happening, for one, um, uh, they themselves have lots, enough money, right, that they can pretend that they are, you know, well, they wouldn't be pretending, they're more like acting out their true capacity, you know, okay, we have four of these, look like that. So they have this capacity to, to act out in like some kind of retaliation against this. Oh, there's one more up top here. And uh, don't forget, that's probably the one I'm going to forget. Uh, so what I was saying is that they're able to like, uh, okay, this is a thicker thread one, so that means it goes into plastic. 
Now what happens with these guys is that they have their resources to, 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 oops, what just fell off? This fell off of something. Ah, right here. So this goes into here like that. And uh, because they have all this, these resources, I wonder what motivates them to try to like want to help other guys, or I don't know if they're helping other guys or just are they angry? You know, that's what I really want to know. Are they angry? What's 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 their motivation? You know what I mean? And that's what I don't fully understand. But if you have any ideas, let me know. I could talk to you about some. So that's what I'll probably do. So this gasket is. Uh, yeah, see all that right there? So that's... that gasket has failed. You can see... Uh, right here... how wet it is past... past the actual where the gasket would end. That means like it's... I'm sorry, no, um... Yeah, this is the inside, right? This is the inside of that chamber. And uh, the outside is wet, so you can see... But there is leakage right here. That's going to compromise the actual engine performance because it needs to have a pretty good seal for it to get a good pulse so it can know to push the air through and trigger the diaphragm to open and flood fuel into the uh, cylinder. So we know that's compromised. This... Uh, I'm going to pull this whole motor out of there. It looks like it would be wise to like get the... Um, that's neat. Uh, let's get these fuel lines off of here. Yeah, I'm gonna pull those out because I'm concerned I'm gonna lose them. Oh, this one of them came out. Yeah. Let's pull this one out. Yeah. And we'll get this fuel line off. So I'm thinking that these guys are angry at these women, and I don't know if it's because they have had relationships with these women that have just misused them for their, um, you know, their um, wealth. But it is a fascinating problem because, like I said, I'm not sure. Oh, this feels like it's gonna crack. If they're doing it because they're just, you know, just want to be angry. Anyway. How about that? Yeah, that's, that's even, that's pretty tight itself too. Okay, so. Okay, this line is pretty rigid, so it's beginning to fail. And it's, uh, what is it, 1 oh, and 12? I don't know. Okay, top line is smaller one. Looks like that one's the return. This bottom one here is uh, probably the one that is there a fuel filter? Yes. This would be fuel in, fuel return. So I am. Maybe I can disconnect it from here. Well, that was oh so useful. What just happened? Uh, yeah, I flicked that off. It looked like it took the plastic top of this fuel tank with it. With it. What does that mean? Um, looks like the fuel tank, this glue thing that was happening here, did happen for a reason. Um, I probably could just maybe just clip clip that out and drill it back out to like match this diameter if we want to like use this tank without you know having to buy a new tank so I don't really think we need to and this tank here let's see what we can do Wow, 
That looks like an interest in taking a fuel filter. All right, uh, yeah, I just got more interest in it. That's cool. All right, so that's that. Fuel filter's off. We have a gasket here. Uh, let's uh, try to get this separated from here. And uh, okay, so the throttle comes underneath and around. Okay, under, around, and over. So we have two twenty-five, two twenty-five screws we need to take out of here. And, uh, Yeah, so anyway, back to the Gold Digger videos. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, those gentlemen might be also just typically hurt. I don't know if they're trying to do some advocacy advocacy work, you know, for uh, for men in general, but I don't know how that's like advocating for men in any way. Okay, that's that. After all, they're just kind of uh, making these women feel very uncomfortable, right? And, it, you know, granted, you know, initially it's kind of arousing to watch, because you're just like, I told you so. There are women that are like that in the world, you know? And, um, since we do live in a world where, you know, if, you, if any type of guy, that, you know, let's be very specific to culture, American culture, you know, that is, uh, if you're if you're a guy and you're doing well, you know you got to be careful because uh, once you're once you've done well enough, what happens is you end up becoming a target, you know, for women that would probably have never spoken to you before. All of a sudden, they're your friend. And now they want to be your significant other, you know. And I remember one time, uh, you know, just really when I became aware of that, it was like kind of like, oh, that's. A little sad. But anyway, uh, you know, there's a saying, uh, you know, she doesn't want you on the way in, on the way to the top, she only wants you when, she, when you're there. That kind of, like, sucks. But again, not all women are like this. Let's just be very, 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 very careful with this. My wording is important here. I'm going to speak with some, some accuracy, but it does suck when you are at the top like that and you do encounter women that are um, targeting you because of your uh, accomplishments. Or your financial exuberance, you know. It's um, I always say it's best to uh, be established, you know, and uh, be secretive about how 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 um, well established you are. Live a live a humble life. You just see who you attract, you know, or find that significant other way before you uh, you know ascend to any success great level of success. At least that way you, uh, you minimize the chances of somebody just like wanting you because of your, uh, your accomplishments or your, or your wealth, you know. Off with the spark plug. Uh, I want to get this, um, yeah. Okay, so I want to, want to unclip this. Yeah, so I'm going to push it that way. Slide that under. Will that work? Let me get that under, out, out to under. Nah, I don't know about that. Pull it off, maybe. This feels like it should, and could, and would. I don't want to break that. You know what I think, I think, right, we should get this carburetor. So then we should take this carburetor off. So that's our filter. And there's uh, two, two, two T25s in that little space here. Now the 
air filter is free. And check and see if we have any O rings. Usually it is. I thought there'd be an O ring right here. I tend to always see an O ring right here. I don't see one. Okay. It's so not winning like that. That's those two. Okay. And that's sat like that. Primer bulb on this side there. Choke. Let's see how that works. Okay. And uh, here's our gasket. Okay. It went like that. Okay. Now we can get this off a little easier, I think. Cool. So we have a way more dexterity since that was uh, freed. So now we can go ahead and continue down this path. Uh, let's see what we got here for carburetor. For carburetor, this is a WT um, three six three, and I also see D six on it. So you can see that. I don't know if you can. Hold on. Let me see that is a two meter two glary WT so. This is a WT uh, group of carburetors. Well, it's uh like I said, I don't know if you can see it, but I I'm having a hard time seeing it, but it's uh It's 363. WT363D6 is also written on it. Okay. So we know what kind of rebuild kit we should put on this. We'll check the pressure to see if it holds. So I think I'm going to unscrew this from the, um, the cylinder head. Uh, it looks like it's. Uh, it just, all it does is contains the. Uh, there's two bolts. This is a T25 also. I really want to know why those guys make those videos. I still can't figure out. Psychology is tricky to me. Just don't know. Anyway, Tiny BD that has a significant other. Um, congrats. Hope that relationship's going well. So that's those two right there. Make sure you can see that. Kind of blocky. So that just holds the uh, carburetor and the, um, yeah, there's a gasket back here. Okay, so, so it holds the carburetor and it holds the, uh, right here on the side, the um, throttle cable slides in like that. So that's that. Now there's a gasket here um, that kind of broke off. So, we need a gasket for that. I think we can get it off now. So, my new interest is uh, also uh, emotional intelligence, right? So it's been brought to my attention that I uh, possibly I'm missing some cues. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, the only reason why I, I'm missing some cues is because I demand anybody around me to be pretty reasonable minded. So if you say any half baked ideas to me, I'm going to call you out on it. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of half baked ideas out there in the world. So it's like that. Okay. It's two gaskets. So. As I spoke to my life coach, bestie and uh, advisor academically, he suggested that I read a little bit about emotional intelligence, right? And uh, I started to like read about it. There's two pieces of literature on the on the topic that I, uh, I acquired. One is emotional intelligence. The other one is another book called Emotional Intelligence 2.0. 2.0. .0. That's right. So I got both of these books. Okay, let's say I guess it's definitely shot. And uh, I'm a little disappointed with Emotional Intelligence 2.0. It reads like self-help, but I'm not really that into that genre. I'm definitely into uh, knowledge to change your life. But that kind of knowledge I want is the knowledge that allows you to improve your critical thinking. Right? So here's the one thing that I find fascinating, right? It's the connection between success and emotional intelligence, right? And the types of jobs you have when you have high emotional intelligence, right? So you tend to be more forward facing, you know, like the, the kind of individuals that are uh, in, um, in corporate, but in the business side, you know, the project managers, people that go out and meet with clients, you know, those kind of individuals. When you're uh, in the back of the house, you're more, tend to be lower in the emotional intelligence and uh, higher in the, um, on the uh, technical side, right, which is just the intelligence side, which is neat because you kind of realize like, okay, well, uh, we all have different purposes in life, right? But here's the thing, if you are able to be very savvy, right, with emotional intelligence and techie at the same time, you're gonna beat up the best techie person, which is kind of weird, you know. You think about it, right? But it's limited, you know. It's limited. Like you, you want the smartest person, you're gonna get the smartest person. Some jobs you just can't fake it till you make it, you know. If you're just not good at your job, like if you're a technical, you know, technical field, and you're not good at it, it's real obvious. So you're not gonna go too far. So you don't have to worry about your emotional intelligence. To, you're not gonna, you can't lean on it to to carry you through, you know, as they, as they would say. Found it. Sorry, right there. That's super hidden. So anyway, I've had uh, multiple experiences where I've been kind of looked over, you know, for someone that has had higher agreeability. And it sucks, you know. It happens professionally, happens romantically. It's totally fine, you know. The only problem is, is like at a certain point you start like thinking to yourself, well, I need to, I need to fix something, and you know? I can't have this same level of difficulty happening to me, right? Now it's a strange problem to solve because you kind of like say to yourself, well, do I try to like cooperate, play along? Okay, this is a really thick threaded one, so it goes into plastic over here. Do I play along just to like get along to survive? You know, I mean, what do you do? I don't really know. What's the right answer? But I know that, you know, to a certain degree. Come on, that's not it. Some more. Ah, right here. I think, I think, I don't know, is that one? Two, three, four. Yeah, I think maybe here and here has another. Let's pull those off and see. So for instance, right, like, uh, let's say, uh, like, I, I enjoy uh, doing uh, activities, like coaching gymnastics, right? It's a fun, fun sport, right? But there are, uh, there are certain types of, this is a, another thick thread of one, there's certain things about gymnastics, right, that uh, it just doesn't work for everybody, you know? Like, for one thing, you can't be a, a whiny kid. 
right? Or you just can't be whiny, period, right? So since I don't do too well with whiny people, right? I wouldn't be a good coach for you. You're gonna get a lot of nasty emails if you hire me to like coach somebody that doesn't want to work. Cause I'm like, well, we got stuff to do. Let's do. Let's go. We got work to do, right? And, you know, we have a culture of like we give out participation awards. Uh, things like that, I just don't understand, you know? You didn't do a good job, you didn't do a good job, that's all. So, uh, that doesn't go well for certain people. And uh, they get offended, you know? Now, for me, I'm like, listen, that's reality, you know? That's how things work, that's life. But they're not trying to hear that, most people, that is. So, uh, I wouldn't be a good coach Right? But the thing is, most people are, are like that in gymnastics. That's the bulk of your money. People that don't want to do any work. And since they had a bulk of your money, you got to cater to them, right? So, who's going to win out in that situation? When it has the most emotional intelligence. That's who's going to win, you know? This is cool. So this is the clutch. They're going to be worth more money to that, to that, to that, um, to that, and to your to that employer, so we have three screws here that went into this plastic because they can work with the people that are uh, challenging. Now let's talk about it, right? Because it's pretty cool what's happening. I'll bring you back. All right. So this here is what spins, right? The shaft and uh, the clutch here. Centrifugal force causes it to expand as the engine spins faster, and it grabs the outside and starts turning it, you know? So that's what this does here. Now the clutch itself... Well, it's good, good, it's good. It's got signs telling me that how it's... Uh, this is off. Okay, so, so I have to hold... I have to hold it to turn it. So I can probably just jam something in there to keep it the, uh, the cylinder from going up and down to like remove this. Because this here is attached to that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's get this off clutch so we can get this out and uh, let me try to uh, let's see what the gaskets. There's a gasket here. I get that gasket too. Yeah. So I need to get this half inch nut off and uh, I need to stop the engine from spinning, you know? So when you do that, it's actually turning the engine. Um, so, uh, well, that didn't, that wasn't too convincing. That didn't look like it was turning, did it? Yeah, the piston goes. Okay. All right. So I need to take a piece of rope, right? Make sure you clean it off if you don't want to put any contaminants in the uh, engine. So put this all the way at the bottom. There you go. So now it's it's locked. Can't turn anymore. Right, and I need to now. I gotta get the thread right. It looks like it says off is this way, so I'm just worried about if it's reverse thread. here. So you can pull that out. A washer. This washer makes inspect it. This it's agnostic. It doesn't seem to have any specific side that's special to it. Okay. 
so that's that. Okay. Um, let's see. So that, cool. So that slides. Yeah. Okay. So this clutch here just kind of comes right off. And, uh, and all the work, the writing is forward facing, so you know it's the orientation. It's got a little rust happening back here. I'll we'll probably clean that off. Okay, so, nothing special with this. It looks like a. Uh, yeah. Uh, it does have a little indentation here to say that it sits onto that. So that's that. Okay, so that just slides off with the pull start. Okay, great. We, let's see. We have this is loose. We had a couple things attached to this here. So that's where the pull start sits in there. Kill switch. Right. And, uh, lift that off. So this top, the uh, the on here is what we're going to remove. On is coming off first. Okay. And then it looks like we have a T25. That's probably what that is going to be. Oops. What is this from? Ah! This came from something. Oh, this. Okay. That's those. Okay, let's pull them off. Turn on the reason. Alright, those two rubber caps. The bottom of that, so. Okay, it slides on top of this. It's not special in orientation, so don't have to worry too much about that. Okay, we got a lot of rust right here on the magneto, so we're, we're going to have to clean that rust off because it inhibits the spark. Um, but yeah, it's a T25. Is it? Mm -hmm. Sure is. That's that very long screw. Okay, it looks like the top part of the magneto, the bottom part right here. Let's get this bottom bolt out. So the top bolt. It might be longer than the sh bottom one that holds the magneto onto the body of this engine. Just from the... Yeah. No. Yes. No. Yeah, they're the same. Okay. Oh, yeah. One of these things. So it's a spacer of some sort. So we'll have to figure that one out, right? So that's, we would uh, get the rust off of there. All those things. So it's, so it's compromising the actual engine run, the way the engine runs. So, okay, that's free. It's gonna need a little bit of a bath. Okay. 
So we'll clean the rust off of that. So this looks like a nice candidate for some electrolysis, doesn't it? Okay, all right, don't forget your glasses. Try to get that spring off. Let's see how successful we're going to be today. It's much easier than I thought. Set in there like that. It's a spark arrestor. So this is a three sixteenths we're gonna use. That's what this one is. And uh, hopefully we can get that off of there. Favorite sound. It's coming. All right, you see what I'm doing? I'll be doing that for a little bit. I'll bring it back when I'm. Yeah, the vice grip's the way to go. Not too, too tight. Yeah, well, that casket, this casket just <laughs> friggin' separated on me. Yeah. How about that, huh? looks pretty good, the condition of it. Um, let's take a look and see, because I want to look for any like damage internally here. Let's see how much you can see. So it's pretty smooth. 
Oops. Yeah. This is what we want. Okay. So at some point I'm gonna have to uh start to rehome these things, I think. Let's get this gasket off of here. We knew it was going to fail anyway because of the, uh... Right, don't go too... Don't push too hard because you don't want to... You're not trying to damage the aluminum this sits on. So we're going to need a... gasket for that. So it's a cylinder head gasket. Alright, so we had a, a nice little list of gaskets we need to find for this thing. One, okay, I'll show you. Alright, so we have everything torn down to just about, there's no more, there's no more too. We're gonna do some cleaning. Oops. Some cleaning to do. Clean that out. Get that rust off of there. So, you might want to push this out. Maybe. I don't know. Really know. Anyway, all right. You can see where we are. So we're going to try to find a gasket kit, look for all the gaskets for this. Well, the spark plug for this is um, it's a Champion, Champion spark plug RDJ8J, that's what, at least that's what I pulled out. I'll have to look, look it up and see. Alright. So let's get those those uh, gaskets ordered. Let's get the, um, the filter we're gonna keep. This is good. We'll just clean that up. We'll wash the parts. Um, get the carb kit. Ah, oh, no. Let's check the carb before we do that. All right. Let's see what we get. Uh, we got the uh, this set to pressure, which is what this dial does, because we have a uh, vacuum and then pressure. So it's in pressure mode. Hose come in. I think this should be the one we're going to test to see if it holds at 10 PSI. So, oh yeah. Okay, so, either it, it really is a great carburetor, so now we have a, a baseline, or it's just so gummy that the uh, needle can't move. Well, either way, as you can see, this is a solid carb, so this feels like this should have been rebuilt quite well, you know? All right, so with that being said, we're, we've got that, that, that question solved. Here, here are all our gaskets, right? So we got to get uh, those two there. And uh, this is for the bottom of the uh, engine block that connects to the plastic part of the... Uh, um, body shroud whatever you want to call it and then over here we have the uh this will be the gasket we will use for the cylinder head okay so four gaskets we know that we need a new primer bulb that's useless it's like rock hard it doesn't even do anything and um everything else should be fine we should be able to uh, put it back together after we do some, we'll have to do some electrolysis to this. Get some rust off of that. We'll, uh, re you know, we'll spray paint it and make it look nice. Rebuild the carburetor. All right, good. We're good to go. We got everything we need. Let's do this. So we get ourselves our uh, rebuild kit here, um, engine gasket kit, and uh, those are the numbers that are on it. And uh, I just want to see if these uh, 
all match up. So, uh, did you see that? Yeah, hope you did. And HOP 53000712253 gasket kit. See if uh, what we have in here matches up, shall we? This is an engine rebuild kit. So I got this because I wanted to uh, not have to uh, incur too much cost getting individual parts. It looks like that. Hmm. doesn't look like that. Okay. This looks like that. There's still more. Okay, I'm assuming this that lines up with that. Two uh, little breathing hose holes. I gotta double check that and make sure that lines up. Okay. I'm unsure about. I mean, I, this has similar um, block ends on the side here, so this might fit this. Mm hmm. Let's see. Ah. Okay. Not so we have a couple things happening here. I, I want to just um, pull this off. If you look closely. Here, I'm just going to get that off of there. So that's the orientation. Um, it, it seems to be s like a, it doesn't look like anything special about it like this side looks like that side um, I'm gonna look inside of here I'll show you what I mean Okay, so right here was a side that was away from the uh, flywheel. I look inside of it, I'm seeing specific that's different from this side. Hey, that's not true. Mm -mm. No, it looks the same. Okay, well either way, right? Uh, let's see how we can kind of link demark this so we can put it back together hmm. it's an arrow sometimes these things have arrows <laughs> on top we can't see anymore uh, underneath ah here we go underneath that's it so underneath here we have like a number one. So we know that that number one is the side that's away from the flywheel, right here. And then there's like a, I don't know what that that is. It's a little hard to see. Give me a better shot here. Okay. So I'm not sure what that is. 
That looks like a number one to me. All right, so that's what we know, right? Okay, so we're gonna put that in the ultrasonic cleaner. Now, I wanna get this flywheel off and because I mean, it looks like it's all metal, but I'm pretty sure there's a bearing right in here. And if, it, if there's a bearing in there, it's going to have, well, rubber. So, and I don't know if I really want to pull this all apart anymore, you know? <sighs> Maybe just some brake parts cleaner and call it a quits. Uh, I think of So uh, this has a washer right here. Uh, don't lose that. I... So this is a f uh, 5 8 uh, uh, This is going to work. So it's keyed. Yeah, it's totally keyed. All right, um, flywheel. And uh, here is. You can see it a lot. So it's keyed right there. We have a snap ring that holds this on to here. Um, so we we'll take that snap ring out to push this out of here. Now this, uh, yeah, there you go. That's the, that's that's the. See that? That's rubber. Good thing to do is to check for a play. So this has a lot of play. And you know that uh, that's not good, the Baron. So this is pretty good. Not a lot of play at all. There we go. I'm trying to clean this off. I'm using WD-40 in this bottle. All right, looks good. We have a couple uh, inhabitants we need to get rid of. So insects kind of like took up home. All right, well, let's see what I'm doing. I'm going to continue doing that for a little bit more. I want to put a couple things in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, and magneto. We'll see everything in this. It's not plastic. Hold that to those. Hmm. Actually, do I want to do that? No, I don't. Change your plan. So those big pieces we'll put them there. That. This. Definitely the... Exhaust. Put that in there also. So I'm going to sand uh, the uh, magneto here. It's got a lot of rust. 
This is a 100 grit, a 100 grit sandpaper. I haven't used this toxic stuff in a while. It's rust remover, navel jelly. And uh, try to avoid it if I can. I'm not a fan. Man, that's been a while I haven't used that. Okay, hold on. <laughs> it's, it's like one big block. Oh no, the, 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 oh god, the uh, cap broke. Because I tightened it too much. Plastic so brittle. Alright, well anyway, it's kind of pointless. It's supposed to be soft. Well, that thing has changed its viscosity a bit. Yeah, the brush that I'm going to use to remove the rust. It's getting a, a navel jelly treatment. Okay, well anyway, perfect world. I'll just paint that on there like that. Call it a quits, but I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'll give it a try, see what we get. The rust in this thing is pretty bad. So. Come on, navel jelly. I wonder what's, uh, I'll have to try to figure it out if I wanted to try to save this container. Navel jelly, I can see what's, uh, what exactly is the soluble liquid. I mean, solvent, sorry. And I can just pour that in there and probably bring that back to life. And definitely get a new cap. Alright, cool. Bring it back. <laughs> I've never seen that before, have you? Yeah. So I went outside to the public trash can. It was just outside on the ground anywhere. I know this is a generic looking cap size, so I just found a bottle. What is this? Is aloe vine? Yeah, just unscrew it, screw it on, works perfectly. As these caps are generally generic, you know, they're all manufactured. Same place, most things are manufactured, begins with a C, ends with an A. Great. China. Alright, so we're back. I don't know exactly what Let's see if we can get this viscosity back. So will that work? Yeah, it looks a little bit better. That's what it used to look like. Yeah. Sorry. Did you see that? Sorry. All right, great. So we'll let that sit. Should be able to wipe it off, and then we're gonna have to implement some uh, anti-corrosive tactics. Maple jelly. How well do you think uh, we did on this? If you're wondering what that buzzing sound is in the background, that's the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, cleaning those parts that we pulled apart earlier. I should be able to wipe the rust right off.
Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad at all. Okay. So. Alright, we're going to leave well enough alone. Yeah. I like it. So we get all the chemical uh, stuff away. So I'm not sure what long-term damage it does to plastic, you know. Okay, we're good. Solid. Okay, so that's this magneto. And I think uh, what we should try to do next is uh, look at the... Uh, I'm kind of concerned about the pull start. There's some corrosion happening to it. All right, see the. I'm gonna minimize this from rusting again. I saw a really good chemical online for this, but I'm gonna spray some WD-40 on it. Just to make sure it doesn't. Uh, flash rust or corrode on us. I want to show you something about continuity, which is really cool. All right, so here's our switch right here. We have uh, some alligator clips connected to it. And those clips are connected to the uh, to my uh, multimeter, like that. And you put your multimeter in uh, the lowest ohm setting. So this for me would be... Actually, I wonder if I can get to like 20 kilo ohms? Yeah. 20 kilo ohms. And I flick the switch from one position to the other. It goes to 1 ohm, right? Zero. Right, so... That would be off. S circuits closed, you get one. So let's say you now you have uh, continuity. Uh, miss something here. Oops, 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 oops. Okay. It's off. That's on. It's a good way to know if your switch works or not. So I'm going to share that with you. So again, go to the lowest ohm setting you have. On and off. It should go from one to zero. That's on. That's off. Or think of on as a closed circuit. So it's closed and it's all connected. Okay? This is an open circuit. Alright.